What's up, my brothers from other mothers? I'm sure you guys hear this joke on the interwebs all the time about a tragic boating accident. Yeah, it's kind of funny as an excuse. It's kind of dumb because imagine some future tyrannical government that comes to take your guns and Agent Smith shows up at the door. Knock, knock, knock. Sir, we've been informed that you have some firearms according to our records, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, no, I had a tragic boating accident. They all fell in the lake. And he's like, oh, very well then. Bye bye. Have a nice day, citizen. And they're not going to rip open your walls in your backyard and shoot your dog and take all your stuff. Now, of course, if the government is so tyrannical that they're going door to door stealing people's guns, then of course they're not going to be persuaded by some stupid excuse about they fell in a lake. That said, if you really did have a boating accident, what would happen to the gun? Would it be recoverable? A friend of mine had this Kimber that was submerged under salt water for about a week and then laid completely disregarded for several years before he finally got it back. The story behind it isn't really that interesting. I did post it on some of my social media if you want to go digging around playing Nancy Drew and fi find out what it is, but it's kind of a letdown. The important thing here is the condition the pistol was in after my friend got it back, and it was just a complete shit show. It was ugly. I tried a lot of different things to clean it up. Some of them worked better than others. Here's what we did. First, I soaked the gun in hot water to hopefully dissolve the salt encrusted on it. I placed the plastic tub with water and gun in my smoker for a day to be heated by the sun and it actually got pretty hot. My guess is that heat will help loosen things up. I have no idea what is going to work best to clean this up, so I'll try one thing at a time and just see what helps. Then I washed it in hot, soapy water and rinsed it. At this point, I was already pretty surprised how nice it looked, but the magazine was solidly stuck in the grip. Next, I tried Coca-Cola because the internet. Same routine, I immersed the pistol in Coke and left it in the smoker throughout the day. Although the Coke didn't appear to make any significant difference, I was able to finally get the magazine out. I know some of you are probably going to take this as proof that Coke cleans stuff good, but I think it was really just a result of sitting in the water for another day. Coke is mostly just water after all. Next up was CLR. This one seemed to make a pretty big difference, and it makes sense because it's, you know called calcium lime and rust remover so anyway after the clr i could wiggle the barrel on its link press the magazine release and the grip safety started moving but the slide was still locked up tight another suggestion that came up a lot on social media was atf I guess automatic transmission fluid is supposed to have some cleaning mojo in it, but some internet posts that look credible say that motor oil has more detergents in it and transmission fluid doesn't really make any sense for trying to clean something. I don't know. I'm not a mechanist and a quart wasn't enough to submerge it and I'm not made out of money, so I propped it up with a rock or something. So I know that doesn't really look like a lot, but it did feel slightly looser in a way I can't really articulate, but it did feel like ATF did something. After that was acetone. Again, it felt a little closer, but the slide was still locked up tight. At the very least, the acetone should have completely degreased it, right? The next contestant on Will It Clean is kerosene. About this time, you might be noticing that what I've done up to this point is actually three out of the four ingredients in Ed's Red, which is a formula for exactly this sort of nasty cleaning that the old timers passed around on cork message boards at gun counters before Al Gore invented the internet. Combined together, it might have done better. And I did not do odorless mineral spirits for reasons, and because it's my party and I'll do what I want. Actually, I took a poll over on my own channel, and I did the top results on that poll that sounded like they might reasonably work. I only noticed after the fact how close the ingredients were to Ed's Red. In any case, the next gladiator to enter the arena isn't in the Ed's recipe at all, and it seems to have done the most. Good ol' motor oil. 5W20 weight. Now, to be fair, one could argue that this was just the straw that broke the camel's back, and one of the other chemicals did the real work. I don't know. I'm not a geographist, but the slide is moving now, and that's big progress. Once the slide was moving, a little encouragement with a hammer and a block of wood got it open again. It took a lot of grunting and cussing, but after working it back and forth a few times, it was loose enough to disassemble. I detail stripped the gun and wiped all the oil off with paper towels. I expected to find a lot more rust inside than I did. I thought for sure the small springs would have rusted away into bits. 
But even though this gun really ought to have a spring rebuild, every single part was still in good enough shape to at least appear to be in working order. The difference before and after is absolutely profound. Even if this doesn't shoot, I'm amazed at how nicely it cleaned up. All in all, I think it came out pretty well. And now, finally, I get a chance to shoot it. Let's see how it runs. All right, here we go. Oh. Just a little back on the slide, chambered. That's just typical 1911 sh right there. <laughs> no shit. Every round. That is incredible. Every single round. I mean, that first one, just a little bit, it's possible that I didn't have a good firm grip on it. So I'm gonna load this up again and see if I can get through another magazine without any malfunctions. Hey, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> so far so good. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> all in all, given the fact that nothing has been replaced on this, given the fact that this thing sat in salt water and then was completely disregarded for years, I'd say that's really impressive. I'm reasonably confident that with a spring rebuild kit, this thing would run maybe 100%. Yeah, there are probably some fairly weak springs in here, but all in all, that is remarkably good performance considering what we're looking at here. So I could say pretty confidently that if you had a boating accident, they might still work afterward. Keep it real, folks.